make of the claim that there is an assault on people of Indian origin, the government charges that it is, I quote, without any basis, and, there, and, and this is a complete figment of imagination. Quite apart from what others have written and said on this particular issue, I have written and highlighted the following on my Facebook page and elsewhere. One, the widespread dismissal of hundreds of indo guyanese in the public sector without a hearing or cause and without compensation. I have filed legal proceedings on behalf of many of them. These proceedings are pending in the High Court. Two, the repossession, seizures or attempted repossession and or seizures of core homes and house lots from predominantly indo guyanese by the Central Housing and Planning Authority. Again, I have filed several legal proceedings in relation to the same. They are pending in the High Court. Three, attempts and continuous attempts to expropriate private properties owned by transport and the certificate of title, predominantly by indo guyanese by state agencies. Again, there are legal challenges pending in the High Court in which I am involved. Four, the targeting of predominantly indo guyanese for investigations by Soku and Saru and the confiscation of large sums of money and jewelry in the course or as a result of those investigations. Again, I have filed legal proceedings in relation thereto and they are pending in the High Court. Five, the wanton dismissal of senior management staff of predominantly indo guyanese descent at Gaisuku. Again, I have filed legal proceedings and they are pending in the High Court. Six, the closure of Wales Estate, where the majority of workers who would be rendered redundant and without a livelihood are of indo guyanese descent. Seven, the refusal to offer financial assistance to the rice industry, which is predominated by indo guyanese Eight, the systematic removal of street lamps from certain indo guyanese villages in West Coast Barbies, while at the same time installing street lights in afro guyanese communities. Nine, the targeting by GRA of indo guyanese in regions five and six who have under cultivation in their yard two or more banks of vegetables. The above list is not exhaustive. Neither are any of the cases to which I have referred the figment of anyone's imagination. Each case is real and factual. I have names, addresses, and affidavit evidence from, the many, from many of the victims. Ironically, many commentators have publicly pointed out that Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu and Minister Kemra Ramjatan are themselves victims of discrimination within the coalition government. It is public knowledge that the Prime Minister has not been given the type of functional responsibilities contemplated by the Cummingsburg Accord. Similarly, a host of important powers and functions were deliberately removed from the Home Affairs Ministry and transferred to the Ministry of the Presidency upon the appointment of Mr. Kemraj Ramjatan. Again, these are not figments of anyone's imagination. These are real facts. I took the opportunity to walk with just a few of the files of cases to which I have made references. And I can give you live examples. I can read from the affidavit evidence of persons who claim to be victims of discrimination. You know that we have filed cases also for 2,000 Amerindians who were dismissed because of their suspected allegiance and support for the People's Progressive Party. You know that I have also filed a series of actions on behalf of afro guyanese rice farmers in Region 5 mm -hmm. who've le whose leases have been unlawfully revoked by the president himself because it is suspected that these rice farmers have some allegiance to the People's Progressive Party. These are afro guyanese So the discrimination that I'm highlighting is both ethnic as well as political. But I thought that I would concentrate more on the indo guyanese issue because that is the one that seemed to have invoked the wrath of the government in relation to what former president and opposition leader 
Comrade Barra Jack Beer said in New York. I'll pause there and uh, hand over back to Gil. Okay, thank you. To continue in the vein of looking at ethnic and, and uh, political discrimination, and to take off from what uh, Mr. Nanalal said, not only are Indo-Guyanese being discriminated against, but Amerindians are also victims of discrimination in the regions where they supported the People's Progressive Party Civic. The largest ethnic group who felt the government's guillotine was 1972, 1972 Amerindian Community Service Officers in July 2015, whose jobs were terminated at one fell swoop. Two, the termination of the entire staff of the Griff funded Amerindian Land Titling Project Unit at the Ministry of the Presidents in August 2015. The termination three of Amerindian clerical staff in interior regions for no cause except that they were thought to be PPP. Four, the consistent harassment, targeting, and transfer of Ms. Sharazad Atkinson, <coughs> District Education Office in Region 9, by the REO Parker because she is a PPP candidate in the 2015 general regional elections. Five, the removal of the school uniform program in Amerindian areas and its, replace, and its replacement with expandable sandals. Six, the threats to the people in the border areas are benefiting from Brazil's social assistance programs. They shall be unable to access the OPA, the old age pension, and public assistance with special target on Region 9, which you know supported the PPP heavily. But what began as a new government throwing out any person it considered to be a PPP sympathizer from the public service and boards in fact, in their minds, it appeared that Indian became synonymous with PPP, and therefore they forgot that they claimed to have won 11% of the Indian vote. And the replacement with mostly APNU supporters has consistently continued during the 14 months of the administration. This pattern, which has emerged now, can only be described as systemic racial and political discrimination. In fact, it is the government, by its actions, that is driving fear and alienating large sections of the population, even those who voted for them who they thought would bring change. In addition to the cases which are in court and which Mr. Nandalal referred to, in addition to the uncaring policy directions of the government in the rice and sugar industries, this systemic discrimination which disregards the constitutional objectives of protecting a multi-ethnic, multi-religious nation which ignores the semblance of ethnic and political representation is even more alarming when one examines the composition of the boards, appointment of ambassadors, honorary advisors, presidential and ministerial advisors, etc., since this government came into office 14 months ago. Here are the findings. Presidential advisors, all are APNU and all are one ethnic group, afro guyanese Ministerial advisors, the 12 that we've been able to track down, are all APNU, one mix, the rest are all afro guyanese Honorary ministerial advisors, which the Honorable Minister Nandalal raised a question in Parliament about. Of the 33 honorary ministerial advisors, four are of indo guyanese descent. <coughs> ambassadors and high commissions, four of the 10 newly appointed uh, ambassadors and high commissions are indo guyanese the composition of the cabinet, government members of parliament, illustrate the paucity of ethnic balance. Surely at the mildest level of criticism, it can only be called highly insensitive in a multi-ethnic nation. When one examines state boards and government boards, the picture is even more revealing and even more alarming. A cursory glance at the official Gazette website or hard copies since July 2015 are proof of this level of discrimination and alienation of people of other ethnicities. And I'll give you a few examples. <clears throat> I have taken about 40 state boards and managed to look at the representation by ethnicity. And in fact, the representative of any other ethnic group on any board is less than 25 percent in 27 boards, sta 40, 40 state boards. If we take the boards of guardians, regions 2, 8, and 9, which have recently been announced, all APNU and not one indo guyanese even in regions where the majority population is indo guyanese that is Region 2. In fact, the 2015 official gazette of the Board of Guardians, some of them will not expire until uh, later on in this year, that in fact, in regions, in a number of the regions, 2, 3, 5, and 6, where the majority of the population is indo guyanese 
there you can find one, maybe one Indo-Guyanese in some of the boards uh, in these regions. And therefore, the border guardians at 2015, which are the majority of boards, are not representative ethnically of the demographics of the areas that they represent. The Poor Law Commission, zero, zero of any other ethnicity. Uh, Gaisuko, two Indo-Guyanese out of nine. Gaiwa, two Indo-Guyanese, one mixed of nine. Guyana Lands and Surveys Commission, one Indo-Guyanese. And when I say any other ethnic group, I'll, I'll notice them. But I, when I say Indo-Guyanese, that's the only alter other group that's there. Banka Guyana, three Indo-Guyanese who are ex-officios and two Indo-Guyanese who are members of the board. Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation, three of seven members of the board are Indo-Guyanese. Guyana Gaming Authority, one of four. Guyana Gold Board, zero. No ethnic balance at all. Guyana Securities Council, one of four. Guyana Geology and Mines Commission, we're waiting the new board as the last one expired since December 2015 and we can't find any gazette showing uh, what is the new board. But from that board, the majority was not uh, Indo-Guyanese. We're not Indo-Guyanese. Guyana Tourism Authority probably is the most mixed board of the entire government with Armenian, Portuguese, Indo and Afro-Guyanese. National Tripartite Committee, five Indo-Guyanese of 20 members on the board. Trade Union Recognition and Certification Board, three of eight Indo-Guyanese. Small Business Council, unable to find any of the names of the 12-member board except three, and none of them belong to any other ethnic group than Afro-Guyanese. National Commission on the Elderly, one Indo-Guyanese of nine. Adoption Board, two Indo-Guyanese of eight. Women's Leadership Institute, two of 13. Central Board of Health, three of 15. National Sports Commission, one of 11. University of Guyana, eight, and this includes Amerindian and Indo-Guyanese of 20 members on the council. National Accreditation Council, zero of any other ethnic group. National Shipping Corporation, two, Indo, uh, two, two non-Afro-Guyanese, one is Indo-Guyanese and one's Portuguese of the 11-member board. Central Housing and Planning Authority, five Indo-Guyanese of 11. National Broadcasting Authority, um, four are non, uh, uh, um, sorry, four of nine, and those four, three Indo-Guyanese and one Portuguese. National uh, uh, Procurement and, I'm now gone black, and, and Tender Administration Board, one of seven. Bureau of Statistics, one of five. Privatization, privatization Board, one of six. NIS, two of 11. I think you got the picture now, right? The government has to be asked 